Okay, we've got our drums sounding really, really good. And now I move on to the bass. The reason I do the bass next is because to me, the bass and the drums are the foundation of our mix and everything gets built on top of that foundation. So I have to move to the bass next. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll listen to our soloed DI bass here. So I love the sound of this DI bass. I really like this as a starting point, but because I've listened to everything in context, I know what I need to do to get this bass really rocking for the full mix. So the first thing we'll do is we'll put on VTM and I've got the VTM again on 30 ips, 2 inch 16 track, 456. And unlike the drums, I'm hitting this a little harder, okay? The bass doesn't have necessarily a transient, okay? So I want to really fatten it up and, and I want to kind of go into somewhat subtle saturation here. So check this out. And bypass. Wow, it really just loses some major cojones when I bypass the VTM. I love, I love the VTM on bass guitar tracks. It just fattens them right up. So we'll put that guy in and now check out what we're doing with the processing. Uh, we've got it going through the virtual preamp, the FG73. This is gonna thicken it up and give it even more upper mid harmonics. I love this on DI'd basses. And now check out what we're doing with the first EQ. We have the FGS. Now this is the FGS, this is a fully parametric EQ. And I love this on bass because I like to do some carving on bass. We have the high shelf at uh, all the way down to 7.5K. We're boosting that a little bit. We're getting some, some brightness out of that. Now check this out. Here's where things start to get interesting. I've got 5K boosted all the way. I want some serious edge on this bass. Remember, it's a DI track. We don't have an amplifier track. We need to get this thing to really cut through because we know we have some heavy guitars coming in. We know that. And we know it's going to need to really punch out. So I've boosted all the way. We have a fairly wide bandwidth here. Again, that's 5K. We took out a little bit of 278, a little bit because I don't want it to get too boxy. Uh, and then check this out, what we're doing with the low end. So we have a low shelf at 125 and it's boosted a fair amount okay almost 8 db so we've boosted that now that's going to bring out some nice bottom end but we don't want it to mask the kick drum and that's why i have a high pass on the fgs all the way up to 67 so that's a really cool trick we boosted a lot here but then we slimmed down we trimmed off the bottom fat here all the way to 70 and let's just take a listen to what that is doing right there We added a lot of bite to this thing and a nice tight low end because this is how we get our tightness. You know, we boost the low shelf, but then we cut out the low fat here. Now we've got one of my favorite bass compressors, the Blue Series FG116 Vintage. We have it on slowest attack, fastest release. We have it on circuit two. Our mix knob has been brought up to 76% because we don't want to kill it. Now, you're going to hear this and you're going to think, wow, that's a lot of compression. It's over compressed, but bear with me because we're going to listen to this in context. And in context, things can sound different. So it's a decent amount of compression, but you can really hear that it's making those notes really resonate and sustain and you can hear a lot of the detail but we're not done yet. We've got another EQ. We have our FGN EQ, and believe it or not, I'm boosting even more upper mid. Am I, am I insane here? Maybe. Uh, but anyway, here we go. It's 2.59K, and we're boosting 5.5 dB on the FGN EQ. That is a lot. This is a strong, powerful, aggressive EQ. So I've got more of that, and then we're finalizing it with the Revival. We've got the low end thickness all the way to 220, and we have the shimmer to eight. Let's take a listen to our whole entire bass track. You're thinking, what the heck did you do to that bass? 
But watch what happens when we bring the drums in. Watch this. Now you're picking up what I'm throwing out. That bass is really cutting through. It's aggressive. It's a little gnarly. And it's going to sound great in the full mix, especially when we bring those guitars in. But we're not done yet. I'm going to show you a great trick to add even more fatness, thickness, and bite to your DI bass tracks. And it's called Bass Distro. So I made a copy of the bass guitar. This is just a straight up copy. Okay, and uh, we'll solo this guy. So here's our copy. Uh, again, I have VTM on basically doing something similar to what I did with the normal DI bass track. Not being too shy there. And then we have our virtual mix rack. We're starting off with the USA. This is the only time you'll see me using the USA in this mix. And I use the USA on this track because the USA has a great way of making things a little bit more forward. And that's going to be important for what we're about to do. Because here is really what we are about to do. We have the FG73 virtual preamp again. But this time we're not using it really as a pre. We are using it as a distortion box. And it is a fantastic distortion box. And we've got the distortion because we've cranked virtual drive almost all the way up. Let's bypass this EQ and just hear what these guys are doing. That is sounding cool. Uh, but now we're going to EQ that sound. We're going to add some upper mids at 3.2 and then we're going to fatten this distorted bass up with a low shelf at 92 cycles and then we're going to high pass it because again we don't want to do anything too drastic to the very sub lows because that's where our kick drum is living so i've got a high pass at 80 cycles here let's listen to that now oh that is pretty now watch what happens when we bring that in to the mix. So I'll bring the drums back in. I'm going to bring our bass DI in. Oops. And let's mix this guy in. Here we go. And now that is Fat City. I love how this bass is sounding. It's really grooving great with the drums. It's fat, it's punchy, it's aggressive. And now we can move on to the rest of the mix.